Ireland is probably one of the most fairy-filled places on earth. This beautiful country has a folklore and fairy lore, both intriguing and powerful, sometimes delightful and often quite frightening. Today, I am going to tell you a little of the fairy wraths of Ireland, the fairy forts, sacred places of mystery to both humans and fairies. To say Ireland has fairy lore is to make it sound like a mere drop in the ocean, and yet this incredible country has far more than that. It has fairy lore at its very birth. The fairies held this country until it was moved into by the humans. This is indeed a fairy isle, fairy to its very core. And this legacy of the fairies has carried through to this very day. Okay, so a lot of modern Irish folk don't give one fig about or believe in the good folk. Yet this is a sad thing. These supernatural creatures are what made and what make Ireland the strange land it is today and give it a unique historical heritage in the world. Folklore often has a basis in truth. It has value beyond measure as it has been so well documented from the ancient sagas that wrote of the birth of the country to officially collected accounts of folk for whom fairies were a part of everyday life, straight to today with the folklorists who collect the last scraps of fairy lore and accounts from the people, such as the brilliant Eddie Lenehan, himself a national treasure. And so what of the Raths? What are these peculiar mounds that dot the green landscape or rise high and mysterious from the soil? These are the fairy forts, places sacred to the fairies and once revered and feared by the people of Ireland. Sadly not so much today in some cases, as many have been partly or fully destroyed by developers and farmers. But this can be a dangerous thing if we look at the folklore, and some of these acts have had repercussions, even in this modern time. So let's have a look at some of the folklore of the fairy wraths. These places are most often mounds, tumuli or small hills rising from the landscape, but they also can include stone circles and hot circles, ancient places the ancient people created. Originally these hills would have had wooden buildings, fort built on the top, but time and weather decayed these leaving only the hill, and sometimes the ditch surrounding the mound. A 1991 survey found there are between 30 and 40,000 wraths in the country of Ireland, of varying sizes and the oldest dating to roughly 3000 BC. Historically, these hills were places that protected the land, the chieftain and his people. A fort with one or two ramparts for defence. It was said that as the chiefs passed, so did the structures, allowing the fairy folk to take over, making them places for their meetings and dances. It is said also that if you place your ear to the ground while on one of the raths and are patient, you may just hear the sound of fairy music drifting up from these hollow hills. These are the places the Tuatha de Danann, the original fairy race of Ireland used to enter and leave their hollow earth home. Often these mounds are found with whitethorn, hawthorn trees on or around them, and these trees also are sacred to the fairies and must never be harmed. People who have done this, even just taking the branches from the trees, have suffered illness and accidents in punishment. Likewise, 
any damage caused by arrogant farmers or land developers to the Raths themselves will suffer harm. In 2017, one politician from Kerry hinted that an incidence of constant road collapse, an unnatural number of accidents and freak weather at one point on the road between Kalani and Cork was because of the Raths in the area and the damage done to them during the road development. The politician considered that that particular stretch of road was cursed by the fairies, and this was known locally as truth, by locals who had despaired at the cutting through of the fairy fort. In 2011, developer Sean Quinn's financial ruin was blamed on his destruction of a fairy wrath. They are not places to be messed with, and yet people in their ignorance are doing. It is a real problem in Ireland, the destruction of both holy wells and fairy forts, and this was written of by environmentalist Tony Lowes. The levelling of these sacred places by farmers, even to the point where one farmer in negotiation with the government to protect and sell it, a 3,000 year old fort, decided to level most of it anyway. Other examples are one that was completely destroyed in two parts, and a man who destroyed two ring forts, after other members of his own family had destroyed three others. No wonder historians and folklorists across Ireland, who feel deep respect for fairy heritage, social heritage and ancient sites wail with despair at the acts of such selfish individuals. Once they are gone, they are gone forever. And yet these are sacred magical places. In my episode about the Hawthorne, Whitethorn, I tell of Eddie Lenehan's fight to protect a fairy bush that was due for destruction by the building of another main road. Lenehan won the fight, and the road swerves around the Whitethorn. So why not these places? It is something that is very worrying indeed. And yet it is not all bad news. Not all farmers are bad. The legendary Pat Noon, known as the Fairy Whisperer, and son of a folklorist, has a farm in Galway full of fairy sites, and growing up there he became used to the comings and goings of the fairies, and grew a deep respect for the good folk and the sacred sites themselves. And likewise there are farmers beyond count, who still respect and preserve these ancient monuments as a valued part of their history. This is what they are after all, the ancient heritage of Ireland and its people. It is not all doom and gloom. These sites need to be visited by us to keep their relevance alive, to re-energise them. Isn't it the same with all of our ancient places? Acknowledge them, visit them, care for them, and make a stand when one is threatened. Now we have looked at the history and the modern problems of the fairy wraths, let's have a look at some of the wonderful collected true tales from the Irish archives that document people's experiences with the wraths. One archival story told of a wrath in Hoggard, where lights were sometimes seen. This same narrator told of another wrath they knew of, where some men were cutting oats in that place until late in the night. The day after this, some of the men developed swollen faces, some had irritated eyes, and none of them recognised each other. Another account was of a woman who was heading home at night across a field that contained a wrath. The fairies caught the woman, and she was never heard of again. A man named Thomas Keeley was cutting trees with a billhook nearby his home, and the day after he was found dead inside the rath where he had been cutting, still holding the billhook. All the neighbours in the parish believed he was killed by the good people in punishment for damaging their home. In another tale at a rath at Ballancorty, a farmer was cutting timber in the rath and yet none of the tools he brought to do this would chop the wood properly. 
In the end, he decided to give up and head home, and as he did so, he came across a group of strange women, all dressed in white, who asked why he had interfered with their wrath home. He did not answer, only fled home as fast as possible, and never went near that wrath again. A Mr Collier had a wrath in what was known as the hand field on his land, and this was being ploughed by tenants. As their horses neared the fairy wrath, one dropped dead on the spot, and the other passed away not long afterwards. Lights had been seen coming from this wrath, and also fairy music had been heard by many local people. Mr Lawler had a wrath on his land and he ploughed all around the edge of it. The day after when he went to look at his work, all the earth had been returned to its former state. A few nights later he heard music and singing, and then a rap on the door that shook the plates on the dresser. He did not go to bed that night, but stayed by the fire with a lit lamp. Suddenly, the lamplight went out, and he was hit in the back with the poker from the fire. When he did go to bed, he could hear noises from below as if something or someone was washing. His wife also heard the pots and pans rattling around, and heard voices talking. She went to the top of the stairs and asked who was there, and a voice told her to go back to bed. She repeated the question, and footsteps began to climb the stairs. She fled to the bedroom, and was ill for six months constantly after this time. From that day on, Mr Lawler would fill a pot of water left by these fairy visitors, and leave it out for them. One night he forgot this task, and in the morning found all the milk in the house had been stolen. During one winter he went to cut the wrath down, but was pricked in the hand by a thorn, which caused his hand to almost rot away. A Mrs Brennan told the recorders that she knew of one wrath where a man had gone to cut some brush. He had been pricked by a thorn, and within a week that finger had to be amputated and he then lost the use of another finger. At a place called Ballyvoggan, there lived a family called Byrne. One Sunday, one of the girls was boiling dinner ready for her parents to come back from mass, and yet the fire would not set properly. She ran to get some sticks from the wrath where there were some, and she threw them on the fire. Instantly, she was covered in sores. When her parents returned from church, they were terrified at the sight of her. They saw the sticks from the wrath and took them quickly back and left them there. So, if you do take a trip to Northern Ireland or Era, take time to visit some of the fairy wraths, but remember, be respectful and don't take anything for goodness sake. Soak up the atmosphere and just see if anything strange happens. I hope you enjoyed this time's telling of tales. If you have, please like and subscribe. And if you would like to hear more tales, hit the notification bell symbol. All of these things help grow the channel. YouTube is a most wonderful thing, but working the algorithms is as tricksy as fairy magic. Liking and subscribing, hitting the bell, commenting, all of these help. So, until next time, dear friends, take care, brightest of blessings, and remember, don't play with the fairy folk, or you may end up in one of my folk tales yourself.